created a carve out that kept them as a subcategory of food and also recognized that they had structure function effects. So what they had to develop is a mechanism by which there was a, a clear difference between the treatment and the prevention of disease as opposed to a molecular structure that has a specific function. And of course, that um, whole process wasn't because Deche in itself has many provisions that have yet to be implemented. One of them that was implemented more recently that had a, a fairly big impact on many companies was the CGMP rule to require you know good manufacturing practice and all the conditions around that. So some of the less established players had great difficulty getting their head around that. Now, in itself, that's not so bad. But what we see is that there are steps being taken all the time that are creating a very, very slippery slope. In a perfect world, if you look at the evidence from trials and from clinical data that has come out of COVID, you'll see that amongst the most, the strongest evidence, if you do forest plots of all, all the results, actually natural medicines did phenomenally well during the COVID era. You know, vitamin D, vitamin C, quercetin. Look, there, there was a there was a meeting in, in um, DC between the 24th and 26th of May put on by the Nobel Prize Summit. And um, it was basically the game plan for how they're going to deal with what they call scientific misinformation. And in essence, Nobel as the sort of apparent sort of uh, gold crown crown jewel in academia that, that hands out Nobel Prizes um, is going to be involved in that process alongside leading universities, the Yales, the Harvards, etc., the Russell Group in the UK. And these universities whose funding sources are very closely linked to companies that have extreme vested interests in, in pharmaceuticals, vaccine technologies, etc., will make that decision. Everything else will be deemed scientific misinformation, and they will be using artificial intelligence to track all of the scientific misinformation under those criteria down and get rid of it and uh, destroy the reputations of people who are essentially dissenters. Now, that fundamentally means that the principle of scientific discourse that has allowed us to get this far, that has allowed ideas, hypotheses, beliefs to be tested experimentally, to then be published, to be exposed to peers, to then have it discussed. Thank you for listening to this short clip from the Nathan Crane podcast. Please share this on social media and to listen to the full podcast, visit NathanCrane.com.